Hi guys, I want to um, I want to just run through the um, the marginal analysis concepts with you um, on these graphs that um, that we've just been looking. It's a pretty important concepts, so it's really important that you um, that you get this. Thought I'd just start by looking at the uh, the graph in front of us. You will notice that um, I've now plotted the marginal cost curve on top of the marginal revenue curve. And it's been a while since we did marginal revenue curves, but you'll recall that the um, marginal revenue curve, which um, for a perfect competitor is the same as its demand curve, the price curve, and the average revenue curve. And of course, it is um, perfectly elastic for a perfect competitor. So this perfect competitor faces a price in the market of PE, uh, which is clearly also its marginal revenue. Now I've chosen a um, a quantity. Uh, well, I haven't chosen a quantity. There's a quantity indicated on the graph, which is a quantity I've described as Q max. Now Q max. It's another way of saying the quantity where the perfect competitor will maximise its profit, and it happens to coincide and coincide with the point where marginal cost cuts marginal revenue, or Another way of saying that is where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue at the price PE. So this is a really important concept. Okay, so what that says is that that's the that's the unit that the, that the perfect competitor should produce up to. So don't make any more units than that, and don't make any less units than that. Make that many units because it's that unit where the marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue. Now let's see if we can understand why. And I think the best way to do that is to look at positions both below and above that position. So let's have a look at a position first of all below that position. Okay, well what we've got here then is, is a, um, a sort of a random quantity. Now I'm going to grab a pen here. And uh, let's get that guy. Uh, a random quantity Q1. Now clearly Q1 is below that position we've identified as Q max. And Q1 is just an invented position. But you'll notice at Q1 the cost of making that unit is represented by this marginal cost here. Okay, which I've said, which I've called MC1. That's the cost of making that unit. Now the revenue from that unit is clearly PE because a perfect competitor gets the same price for every unit. So that so for that unit, the perfect competitor receives price of PE um, as a cost of making the unit of MC. So therefore, the gap between the price and the cost of making that particular unit, and let's highlight that with a bracket, is the marginal profit of making that unit. Okay, so that makes sense. So marginal profit means the profit that they made on, on making and selling that unit um, gets accumulated on top of all the profit they've made for the previous units that the firm has produced and sold. Okay, well that's fine. Now, what we then start is what some of you will notice, and I, well, in fact I hope what all of you notice, is that there are units between Q1 and Q max. So any any extra units they can make in this zone here will also contribute to profit. So for example, let's say this is the next unit. Let's say let's draw a line in here and call that the next unit. Well you'll notice also that the cost of that particular unit is there. And the revenue is there. And the unit contributes more to profit. So the reality is what we notice is that a firm producing at Q1 should actually increase its output. It should keep producing more units. While all the units that are contributing towards to, to profit that's accumulated. To, uh, sorry, I haven't said that real. Well. It should keep producing units while those units contribute to profit. And that stops there. Let's have a look at the position above. 
So you notice the reverse is true at a quantity of at Q2, which is a random quantity above the maximizing position. You notice that the cost of making that unit is higher than the price they get for it. So that unit um, contributes a negative no, I can't write very well with this thing sadly that's a negative that contributes negatively to profit um, and so they, the firm shouldn't make that unit um, and the same is true for units on this side of Q2 any units in this area here you'll notice the marginal cost is above the marginal revenue. So the firm shouldn't make any of these units because each of them takes away from whatever profit they've made up to that point, which is, just doesn't make any sense. So that explains, if you put all that together, that explains why the firm should, if they're below Qmax, they should keep making more units until they get to that point. If they're above, they should make less units until they get to that point which makes that point the profit maximizing position for a perfect competitor. Um, and you'll also note this is that so so that's how to apply marginal concepts. And the same rule applies for a monopolist. Um, and um, you, you've just looked at the graph for a monopoly in the in the uh, the slideshow and um, that showed you that um, at a, at the position where marginal cost intersects marginal revenue that is also the profit maximizing position for a monopolist the only difference is and it's an important one the um, curve uh, sorry the the line runs up through the point where they cross and right up to the demand curve okay I hope that was useful